Hey, good morning, John. Good to see you again. You too, brother. You too. Yeah. So, you know, this morning I wanted to uh, chat a little bit about inventory and what it's looking like um, out there. And uh, you know, I've got a few screens uh, to share, I've got a couple slides to share. Um, but, you know, just the overview is really that uh, inventory is, is low for the demand yeah. that's out there. Um, I'm seeing this is Orange County specific, what we're going to talk about a little bit, but um, and I have some Huntington Beach uh, data points to share as well. So, um, you know, are you seeing that too? You're seeing kind of that the you know, inventory is too low for the buyer demand? Yeah, I mean, for sure. It, it, it's like it went, uh, the, the summer buying season, if you will, really hit and hit hard, right? Um, I noticed it very specifically kind of right at the last week of June, where that last weekend, a ton of clients that uh, we had pre-approved, or frankly, some that we didn't even pre-approve yet, were looking to get out there and see a home and make an offer as soon as possible. And a lot of contracts started hitting, hitting that first week or last week. Huh, yeah, that's, so, you know, interesting you mentioned last week because last week I had a conversation with a, a commercial loan officer. I've got a client who's looking to buy, and I talked to you about this, you know. Um, you know, they, that guy was saying, well, we're not doing commercial loans, we're doing only residential. So then I said, well, thanks for your time because I'm working with you know, my, my buddy John. Um, he said they have multiple offers left and right. They can't get accepted. There's just so little inventory. So the same kind of uh, message. Um, so in order to kind of prove it to our viewers, you know, I wanted to show some statistics. All right. Yeah. And uh, so let me just go into that. And of course, you know, I want to hear your thoughts on, on interest rates and any differences in programs and such. Okay. So um, this is, uh, this information is aged by a couple of uh, uh, about eight days or so. So let me just go ahead and share the screen. So you can see that okay? Yeah. Okay, so this is Orange County active listing inventory year over year. So active listings right now, right? Look at this, 2020 is down here, you know, just below about 4,750. And last year we were, you know, 7,500. Big difference, big gap. In the prior two years before that, also big gap. So that's the active inventory as of uh, June 20th, okay? Um, and, you know, so now the demand, okay, so of course COVID, Hit, let's see what is the time frame here this is this is uh, april like you know between april and may the demand was very low because we had a COVID hit right and then the demand just spiked up right now look at this uh the demand and this is evidence because these are pending sales okay we're not talking about uh you know loan pre-approvals and so on these are pending sales in escrow um, as we speak right so it's gone up to to just the same level as the highest level in the last four years okay so that's another evidence point um, pending sales. This is a similar slide. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. This was Orange County demand year over year, best based on 30 days pending sales. This is year over year. So we're a little below 2017, but catching up. All right. So um, in the closed sales, we're way down, right? Now, so let me just switch back over to, uh, let me stop. You know, so that, and I wanted to um, show those stats because what I, I did my own little reflection and I looked at, um, you know, I looked at closed sales over the last 30 days just for Huntington Beach. That's where right now I'm, I've got a few uh, clients, buyers and sellers looking at things. Um, so in the past 30 days, we had 89 closed sales for single family detached homes. In 2019, it was 105. Before that, 94. Then 94 in 2017, 113 in 2016. So we're down by about 7% in uh, closed sales. That to me was a shock, okay? Because, and I'll tell you why, I, I just talked to a buyer this morning on a, on a uh, property just came up and I asked, what's your perception, you know, Peter, what's your perception of, of number of closed sales, you know, given everything that's been going on with protests, with so on and so forth. And, you know, there's, there's some ne negative media out there. And he thought, well, sales must be down because of inventory is what he said. That's interesting. You know, um, yes, inventory is low, but the sales are high. So that to me is very interesting. I like to hear, hear your perspective on that too. It's just, you know, what is, um, these, the number of sales are so high. So anything coming on the market and in, in, including luxury, okay. Luxury market is luxury market is up 2% in inventory um, compared to the average for the last five years. I have one in escrow now it's it's considered luxury market. And I'll tell you what, it's 60 days um, old. We're about to close escrow in about 10 days. Um, we had nothing. It was crickets for, for such a long time. Then suddenly about 10, uh, 10 days ago, when we accepted an offer, 
it's gonna be a quick close. We, uh, we had several people calling me to see if we could, if they needed a backup offer. We had two people asking about backup offers, a few others about showings. So that's kind of what I'm seeing, John. Uh, resonate with you? Yeah, no, for sure. It sounds like you said the property was on the market there for, you know, maybe 60 days or so now. And then, and then all of a sudden the activity kind of really spiked going back a couple of weeks ago. Right. So that, that even in that luxury market. So I think that um, everyone's perception is a little bit different for sure. And it depends on what their you know, information they're, they're digesting and, and who they're exposed to. But uh, I think, you know, you mentioned even in the luxury market, because the luxury market's one that has a little bit more of a longer, longer marketing time and a little bit more potentially of a, of a price adjustment than where it was pre COVID. But we'll say, you know, post COVID and today, people have, I have generally identified that they want more space than they thought they can live in and they want ownership. And if possible, they want their own separate structure, right? A single family home or a town home at best where they can walk up to their house with a little yard, with a little courtyard or something like that. That's generally where people have determined when they thought they can live in a thousand square foot, or 900 square foot home because they're always out. They've kind of adjusted that thought process a lot, which has further spiked the demand piece, especially in price points that are lower end price points or entry level price points. You know, I would say anything of a million dollars or less for sure, even though a million dollars is in the low end, don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. when you get into the $600,000, $700,000 for sure. And that's being also driven big time by interest rates, right? Interest rates are, we've said this more than once over the last couple of years, but it's true. And, you know, interest rates are at the lowest they've ever, ever been. Right. We have clients that are highly qualified borrowers that are able to purchase properties with rates in the 2% range, right? That doesn't mean it's 2.00, right? Mm -hmm. But depending on their profile, depending on their credit, they're 2.875. 2.75, 2.99, 3.375, right? So it just depends on, on, on their profile. It depends on how much they're putting down, you know, but you can get in to purchase a home with as little as 3% down. You could purchase a home that could be, you know, depending on if you're putting three or three and a half percent down up to close to $800,000 with as little as three and a half percent down, do so at a rate in the high twos and limited amount of cash out of pocket. So that's really, really pushing demand because it's generally cheaper to own than it is to rent right now. <laughs> well, John, that's, that's a pretty good uh, synopsis. I mean, you know, I think you and I are uh, seeing the same kind of thing. And um, I, uh, um, you know, I, I think that there are people out there, there, there are certain um, speakers, uh, people like, uh, I, would, I would say people like Su Susie Orman and Dave Ramsey that are talking about, Hey, you know, wait, keep waiting and waiting and waiting to buy, you know, that's, and so there are many people out there that, that are waiting. And I get that question many times from my buyers uh, about how, Fred, do you think I should wait? Well, look, it's really self dependent, right? Um, that's, that's where a good loan officer and a realtor, what we do is we take care of our clients. We give them the best advice we could um, for them. Right. And, uh, and the, this is very compelling rates. You know, if you're going to live in a house for more than, Typically, people are living in their homes longer than they used to. Um, so rates at as low as they are, that's not a bad idea to go ahead and you know, take advantage of that. Um, I, I believe legacy is an interesting topic. You know, I'm going, you know, thinking about families I've been talking to. They want to leave homes to their kids. They might refinance them. They might rent them out. They might. Uh, but, you know, so we have to look at what's going on in the world right now. And I love what Tom Hanks said, by the way, on, on the Today interview, um, Today Show interview. You know, we don't, have, we, have any, we don't have any clue what the next few years are going to look like. We imagine that it might be pretty bad, but the reality is, hey, you know, this can get much better very quickly. Um, and uh, I think that we, we just have to keep on plugging, um, assist our clients as best as we could and uh, keep on giving great information. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, there's, there's a saying that, that, that you know, you, is popular, but a broken clock is correct twice a day. Yeah. Right? And how has the strategy of weight worked out for folks over the past five to 10 years? Not that well. That's right. Every, we've had multiple conversations over the past with people that have said the weight philosophy 
that, you know, five years ago, three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, heck, in March, this pandemic hit and prices are up, volumes up, inventory is down, it's harder to buy a home now, right? At some point in time, yes. At some point in the future, who knows when that will be, there yeah. might be someone that can go, hey, if you waited, you got a better deal today. But a better deal in comparison to what? A better deal in comparison to buying two years ago or a better deal in comparison to buying the day before that change occurred, right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. you know, I think that's an important piece. You have appreciation. Homes are, are beyond, uh, beyond an investment from a financial perspective. They're, they're where you raise your family, where you rest, where you have comfort. There's a lot more pieces that go into it. The mortgage interest rates, a huge component that's driving this piece here. And, you know, listen, there's some strategies. I don't want this to go too long, but there's some, yeah. some strategies that as a buyer, you can help to deploy in order to help your offer get accepted. That I think from both a loan and a realtor perspective, it will be a good second topic for us to discuss in the next week or two about how you as a buyer can do, can implement certain strategies as a team with your realtor and your lender in order to help your offer get accepted in this competitive market. So you, that's great. Great way to end our, our session today, John. Thanks so much for your time. And we'll uh, catch up again on our next session of uh, the John and Fred show. There you go, man. I appreciate it. All right. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye.